job, brothers, black man, Latin man, is to look out after your brothers and sisters that have need. If they have need, you as a leader is to fulfill the need, not just if they have no food. What is reading a scripture to them going to do? If they have no clothes to wear, what is reading a scripture going to do for them? Nothing. Today's topic, we're going to deal with uh, the wants and needs of our people. The wants and needs of our people. I like the title of that thing. The wants and needs of our people. Hmm. And we're going to open it with Exodus. Exodus chapter 20. Exodus 20 and verse 17. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's house. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's wife nor his manservant, nor his maidservant, nor his ox, nor his ass, nor anything that is thy neighbor's. Now we're going to go right back to that. Go to Romans 7. Romans 7 and 7. Romans 7 and verse 7. This is what the Apostle Paul said about the law, explaining covetousness. Go ahead. What shall we say then? Is the law sin? Is the law sin? God forbid. The answer is no. The law is not sin. Come on. Nay, I had not known sin, but by the law. Paul said the only way you can understand sin is by the law. Without reading and studying the law, you will never understand what sin is. Jalel, what is sin? Sin is the, transgress the transgression of the law. Where would you go to prove that? Uh, 1 John 3 and 4. Read it for me. 1 John 3 and 4. Whosoever committed sin transgresseth also the law. For sin is the transgression of the law. For sin is the transgression of the law. So that's what we all have to understand. Okay? Put that scripture in your memory banks. Write it down. Highlight it in your Bible. Because you ask a Christian what sin is, he or her cannot give an explanation. He or her don't have a clue what sin is. They'll, they'll tell you things like doing something bad. What does that mean, doing something bad? Is that picking my nose? Digging in my ear? What is that, doing something bad? What does that mean? So you need 1 John 3 and 4. Go back to Romans 7 and 7, Isaac. Romans 7 and verse 7. What shall we say then? Is the law sin? God forbid. Nay, I had not known sin, but by the law. So the only way you'll understand sin is by the law. You won't be able to properly understand where you're at in this truth except by the law okay like for, there was a long time a lot of brothers before you heard this truth you thought threesomes was a good thing two women in bed with you at the same time man please then you read the laws like no you can't do that what what do you mean you can't do that so you had to change now that's how you conform your ways so that's what paul is explaining here in romans 7 read it again what shall we say then is the law sin god forbid Nay, I had not known sin, but by the law. But by the law. Come on. For I had not known lust, except the law had said, Thou shalt not covet. So Paul said the only way he understood lust was by the law. That taught him, Thou shalt not covet. Now let's go back to Exodus 20 and 17 where we started. So lust and covetousness, coveting, is the same thing. When you lust for something. That is not yours. That should not be yours. Exodus 20 and verse 17. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's house. So, don't lust after your neighbor's house. Where your neighbor lives might look better than where you live. The law says don't lust after it. Don't covet it. Now, is that saying you, you see somebody's, let's say it's an apartment or a house, whatever, you, you can't say, uh, can you say, oh, that's a nice place. Is that, is that okay? Yeah, that's okay. Where, Abiel, where does the problem come in? Where does the sin come in in that context? Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's house. Where does the sin come in? Uh, the sin comes in when you start to show hatred for that brother for having the stuff. You want to have it. You want to take it from him. Exactly. That's where the sin comes in. When you want to take it from him, when you want to have it for yourself. Is the sound okay online? 
Uh, Exodus 20, 17 again. Exodus 20 and verse 17. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's house. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's wife. Let's deal with that. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's wife. Is it okay if a brother says, oh, bro, you got a pretty wife. Your wife is very pretty, beautiful. Is that okay? So where does the sin come in, Bezalel? The sin, the sin comes in when you start looking at her with lustful eyes like you want her for yourself. Okay, and? And you start actually doing things to try to, you know, make something happen. Right. I'm going to give an example. At the old school, this is way, way, way back. We had a class dealing with um, herbs, and the brother teaching saw one of the brother's wives, and he says to her on the side, why are you with him? He doesn't know as much as I do. And I'm sitting there like, this is the damn devil the Bible speaks of. He's sitting there whispering to the brother's wife, putting him down so that she could go with him. Read that again. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's wife, nor his manservant, nor his manservant, nor his maidservant, uh -huh. nor his ox, nor his ox, nor his ass, nor his ass, nor anything that is thy neighbor's. Because coveting, where does coveting begin, Iran? Where does coveting begin? The sin of coveting, where does it begin? Oh, yeah, your soul, your spirit. Your soul, your spirit. Give me that in Mark 7. Your answer's right, but here's the scripture. Mark 7 and verse 21. For from within. For from within. Out of the heart of men. Out of the heart of men. Proceed evil thoughts. So what is the, you see it says proceed evil thoughts, right? You don't have thoughts coming out of this thing that pumps blood, right, I mean? The evil thoughts come from up here, from your mind. Read again. From read the whole from, verse again. Read Mark the whole seven verse. verse twenty-one. For from within, out of the heart of men, proceed evil thoughts, adulteries, fornication. So before you get to adultery, what you got to do first? Where does the sin begin before adultery is committed? Iran. Where does it start? Right, and what law, what sin is that? Right, covet. That's what it is, coveting. Coveting is the law that pertains to all the other laws in context of sin. Because before you steal something, guess what you got to do first? You got to covet it. Hmm, I like that brother's car. I like his sneakers. Hmm, his wife looked kind of good too. It all starts there first. Then that law pertains to the stealing, the adultery, even the murder. Because guess what? Before you murder somebody, you're going to start to cover. You're murdering for a reason. It might be because of something he or she has. From there, let's go to 1 John 2.16. 1 John 2.16. 1 John 2.16. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. Read it again. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh. So now he's talking about coveting again. There's that word lust. Remember what Paul said in Romans 7 and 7? I would not have known lust, except the law had said, thou shalt not covet. So John says here, for all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh. Go ahead. And the lust of the eyes. Because a lot of covetousness begins also with your eyes. Not saying that blind people can't covet, because you can't covet. They do covet in their mind. You got your mind's eye. But them eyes, a lot of times people go broke. A lot of women. Broke single women. Not these righteous women up in here. But you got a lot of broke brothers, broke sisters because they're trying to keep up with the Joneses. Look what he got. Look at the car he got. Here come the woman. You see the car he driving? And look what we got. We got a hoopty. But baby, I can't afford it. I don't care if you can't afford it. You better make that money. You better get it. I want to drive around in a nice car. Do what you got to do. So what does a brother do? He go, either he steals or he sells crack or something. Why? To please her. Why you want to please her? That's for another lesson. Read that again. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes. I want a big house. Why I got to have this little one-bedroom apartment? Why can't we have a four-bedroom? What you need to build a four-bedroom for? We can't afford a four-bedroom. But, but, I see, look at what, look what Susie got. 
I don't care what Susie got. We can't afford what Susie got. Yo, go out and get it! Now the man goes out and does something stupid. Why? Because he want to please that side. Read it again. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes and the pride of life. That's what the pride of life is all about. Brothers can be content in a hoopty at times, but why do brothers, let's talk about single brothers. Why does a single brother want a nice ride, a nice car? Why does he want it? Somebody else, Jalil. To show off or to impress females. Okay, I like to impress the female. That's the main thing right there. They want it for the woman. They want it for the woman. All that jewelry and all that bling, the flossing is to impress the woman, to draw the woman. It ain't to impress brothers. Could care less. I walk around in rags. I don't care. But when you single and you want that woman, you got to put on something or have something that's going to entice them. That's why a lot of brothers in jail today. Because they went about it covetously. The wrong way. The wrong way. Read it again. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes and the pride of life, is not of the Father, but is of the world. Right, that's not of the Father, it's of the world. That's why Esau pushes into rap music. What is rap music about? Covetousness. The, the entire rap world is about covetous. It breaks the law of coveting. What do you talk about? Stealing? That pertains to coveting. Adultery? That pertains to coveting. Okay, what else? Give me something else. Murder? It's all, it starts with covetousness first. L.O. Cool J is the old song. He said he make, what is, what's that song he did? I'll do your wife or girlfriend. What's that song? I don't know the lyrics. Long, long, long time ago. But them songs, why would you want to buy a record where Negro's telling you he'll be better for your woman than you? And you go out and spend money on that. So all that pertains to covetousness. This is a law that is not of the Father, but it's of the world. The Most High's letting us know we will not get the kingdom if we got that mindset. Coveting. Okay, give me the three basic things in life. Give me that law in Sirach. This is what you single brothers got to understand before you go hooking up with a woman. Because guess what? You got some high maintenance women out there. I used to work, I used to work security at this store. Brother would come in, Simeon, he would come in. And his, now I worked at a kid's store and his kids would always look dirty. But in my mind, I just said, well, maybe they're they poor because of where I worked, they always had sales. So I didn't think nothing too wrong. One day he brought his wife. He said, my, my, he said, bro, because it was, he was either going with his sister or his mom or something, because he had about two or three kids. But when they went in shopping, he would always hang out by me, by this, you know, you check security, check your bags. He would hang out with me right there. This one day he says, yo, bro, I brought my wife. She's here. He says, oh, this woman's annoying as hell. So I'm waiting to see, like, umfufu. His wife comes in, Simeon, bad to the bone. But what made her bad wasn't so much that she was pretty good looking, none of that. The woman came in. Remember I said her kids look dirty. She had a fur coat, six-inch heel. She had, her nails had the diamonds on each tip. She had the bangly earrings, the lipstick. She was done up, like she was going to a magazine somewhere. I look at her up. And dad said, whoa, this dude's got a lot of money. Then I looked at his kids, looked like ragamuffins. Looked like damn rugrats. He says, this woman's going to send me to the damn broke house. And his brother had a decent job, but he would spend every dime on her. Top dollar. Then the kids get the stuff on sale. Wickedness. You get a lot of people that go broke because of that spirit of covetousness. Where'd I say go? Who got it? Oh, uh, Sirach 29. Verse 21. Come on. The chief thing for life is water and bread and clothing and in house to cover shame. Read it again. The chief thing for life is water and bread and clothing and in house to cover shame. See, a Negro will read this and go, I don't like water. Can we put in, let's cross that out and put a Sirach or Alizé. Bread, I'm not into that, bro. I want steak. Clothing, you better put, give me some rock or something, one of them things. What's that stuff from clothes? Versace, that's one. Gucci, Louis Vuitton. 
And a house, uh, not no house, I need a mansion. I need a 20 bedroom, man. you know how many basketball players broke with a 20 bedroom mansion? What the hell you got a 20 bedroom mansion for? Are you kidding me? A regular house ain't good enough. What's the brother that just got broke? Allen Iverson? Oh man. Crying in court, his wife had to walk over from the, with the judges and give her husband, ex-husband 60, here baby, here's $60. He didn't have money for the bus. The dude was making over a hundred million a year. Broke, 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 broke. Trying to live the life of, what's that other brother name that just went broke? Trying to hang with Jackie Chan, what's his name? Chris Tucker. Trying to, you can't hang with Jackie Chan. Jackie Chan been making movies since he was 12. He got, oh my, he got money in the bank. Here come Chris Tucker, wanna hang with him. Get this mansion, go into foreclosure. Trying to, you can't hang with this dude. You gotta know where you at. That's what the Bible, read that again. The chief thing for life is water, and bread, and clothing, and in house to cover shame. Come on, here it come. Better is the life of a poor man in a mean cottage. What is a mean cottage, Barack Bar? What is a mean cottage? A mean cottage is when, like, it's a broke down cottage. Right, a broke down cottage. Something that ain't right. It's, it look bad. It's bad. It look bad. I don't care how bad my stuff look. I, man, I, you used to go to my apartment. Did you ever go to my apartment on Lexington? I had rats. I had roaches. Every day, me and my wife went on a campaign. We had rats. We had rat traps everywhere. You go to my house, you got to be careful where you step. Under the stove, we would have six baby mice trapped every other night. Gobble was little. Go, brothers come visit me. They go to the car. The car won't start up. What's wrong with your car? You just got the car on a lease. He just leased a brand new car. It won't start. We open the hood. There's a rat wrapped all around the thing. We had to them, yank, pull it out, dead rat. That's where I live. But guess what? My wife might have been ashamed. I wasn't ashamed. I'd invite everybody over. Come on down. <laughs> Baby, cook some food. We're going to have a good time. And that's how that's how men are. We don't care about that stuff. It's women. Oh, it doesn't look right, and I'm embarrassed. I don't care. Come on over. We're going to chill, have a drink, and talk about the scriptures. See, women will come over and talk about you, but brothers really don't do that. We really don't do that. Now, we might sit in your house and see something crawling on the wall. What the hell is that? <laughs> we will kill it for you. Bam! What the hell is this? But we're going to keep it moving. We're going to keep it moving. Read that again. Sirach 29, verse 22. Better is the life of a poor man in a mean cottage than delicate fare in another man's house. So the Bible says it's better to have your own. Even if it's jacked up and messed up, better to have your own than be living under somebody else's roof. With, you got to obey their rules, their laws. Okay, from there. Let's go to Joshua chapter 7. We all read this history in Joshua about the Babylonian garment. We're going to touch on it again. The book of Joshua chapter 7 and verse 1. But the children of Israel committed a trespass in the cursed thing for Achan, the son of Carmi, the son of Zabdi, the son of Zerah, of the tribe of Judah, took, uh, took of the accursed thing, and the anger of the Lord was kindled against the children of Israel. And Joshua sent men from Jericho to Ai, which is beside Bethaven, on the east of Bethel, and spake unto them, saying, Go up and view the country. And the men went up and viewed Ai. And they returned to Joshua and said unto him, Let not all the people go up. But let about two or three thousand men go up and smite Ai, and make not all the people to labor thither, for they are but few. So there went up thither of the people about three thousand men, and they fled before the men of Ai. So the damn Africans was whipping the Israelites. That's what was happening. The Africans was putting us to flight. Remember, this is the time under Ephraim. Joshua was of the tribe of Ephraim, leading us into the promised land. We had kicked the dusty Africans out our land. And now we was getting waxed right here. Come on. And the men of Ai smote of them about thirty and six men. For they chased them from before the gate, even unto Shebarim, and smote them in the going down. Wherefore the hearts of the people melted, and it became as water. We got scared. When we saw the men get killed, we was frightened. Go ahead. And Joshua rent his clothes 
and fell to the earth upon his face before the ark of the Lord until the eventide, he and the elders of Israel, and put dust upon their heads. And Joshua said, Alas, O Lord God, wherefore hast thou at all brought his people over Jordan to deliver us into the hand of the Amorites, to destroy us? Would to God we had been content and dwelt on the other side of Jordan. O Lord, what shall I say when Israel turneth their backs before their enemies? For the Canaanites and all the inhabitants of the land shall hear of it, and shall envy Ron. Where verse you at? V verse 9. Jump over to verse 13. I just want to get to the point. Verse 13. Verse 13. Up, sanctify the people, and say, Sanctify yourselves against tomorrow. For thus saith the Lord God of Israel, there is an accursed thing in the midst of thee. O so most high sin is sin in the midst of the children of Israel. That's why you lost the battle. One of you is in the midst of sin. That's why I took my spirit from you and you're losing against these dusty Africans. Go ahead. Thou canst not stand before thine enemies until ye take away the accursed thing from among you. In the morning, therefore, ye shall be brought according to your tribes. And it shall be that the tribe which the Lord taketh shall come according to the families thereof. And the family which the Lord shall take shall come by households. And the household which the Lord shall take shall come man by man. And it shall be that he that is taken with the accursed thing shall be burnt with fire. He and all that he hath, because he hath transgressed the covenant of the Lord, and because he hath wrought folly in Israel. So Joshua rose up early in the morning and brought Israel by their tribes, and the tribe of Judah was taken. So the Lord said, start with the tribe of Judah and examine them. Go ahead. And he brought the family of Judah, and he took the family of the Zarhites. And he brought the family of the Zarhites man by man, and Zabdi was taken. And he brought his household man by man. And Achan, the son of Carmi, the son of Zabdi, the son of Zorah, of the tribe of Judah was taken. And Joshua said unto Achan, My son, give, I pray thee, glory to the Lord God of Israel, and make confession unto him, and tell me now what thou hast done. Hide it not from me. And Achan answered Joshua and said, Indeed, I have sinned against the Lord God of Israel, and thus and thus have I done. When I saw among the spoils a, a goodly Babylonish garment and two hundred shekels of silver, and a wedge of gold of 50 shekels weight. And I coveted them. Then, see that? Then I coveted them. So notice what he wanted. He took a Babylonian garment, 200 shekels of silver, and a wedge of gold of 50 shekels weight that he coveted after. Read. And took them. And behold, they are hid in the earth in the midst of my tent, and the silver under it. So Joshua sent messengers. And they ran unto the tent, and behold, it was hid in his tent and the silver under it. And they took them out of the midst of the tent and brought them unto Joshua and unto all the children of Israel and laid them out before the Lord. And Joshua and all Israel with him took Achan the son of Zerah and the silver and the garment and the wedge of gold and his sons and his daughters and his oxen and his asses and his sheep and his tent and all that he had and they brought them unto the valley of Achor and Joshua said why hast thou troubled us he said why hast thou troubled us remember 30 men got killed because of this go ahead the Lord shall trouble thee this day and all Israel stoned him with stones and burnt them with fire after they had stoned them with stones and they raised over him a great heap of stones unto this day so the Lord turned from the fierceness of his anger, wherefore the name of that place was called the Valley of Achor unto this day. So the Most High is serious about that law of thou shalt not covet. So this brother went to war. He saw a nice garment. He said, that Babylonian garment looked bad. And there's some silver and gold. I'm going to take that too. He hid it in his tent. God said, kill his whole house. Kill everybody. The women, the sons, the daughter, kill his wife, kill the asses, the ox, the sheep, kill everything. That's how serious the Most High is about that law. And we break that law all the time. Give me Numbers 15 and 37. The book of Numbers, 
chapter 15 and verse 37. The book of Numbers is going to help us out. Watch this. Numbers 15, 37. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, and bid them that they make them fringes in the borders of their garments. Like the American Indians, like the uh, Seminole Indians, okay, like the tribe of, of the Aztecs, the tribe of the Aztecs, the Mayans. They all wore fringes in their garments. That's one way the so-called white men knew that they were Israelites, based on their dress code. Go ahead. Throughout their generations. Meaning forever. It said throughout their generations, meaning forever. Not just on the Sabbath day, forever, always. Go ahead. And that they put upon the fringe of the borders a ribbon of blue. So upon the fringes where they put a ribbon of blue. Go ahead. And it shall be unto you for a fringe that you may look upon it and remember all the commandments of the Lord and do them and that ye seek not after your own heart. Now I want you to pay close attention to this part right here. The reason for the fringes, the dress code that God gave us, it says what? And that ye? And that ye seek not after your own heart and your own eyes after which ye use to go a whoring. That's what Achan did. That's what A this is the law also that Achan broke. Those, the dress code is to remind you to keep God's laws. Remind you that God has given us the top dress code. But he saw a Babylonian garment. He said, I like the way that thing look. I want to dress like that. And the most high got angry. See, today our people dress like who? Anything the so-called white man puts in his magazines, on his networks, our people follow. Read that right. Read that precept again. And that ye seek not after your own heart and your own eyes, after which you use to go a whoring. Right. So what do we do? We look at Vibe magazine. Name some of the magazines they got out there that our people into. Cosmetology, our Essence, GQ, right? GQ, uh, what else? Maxim, Esquire. So our people look through these and we look on BET to see how they dress. I wonder what's the latest fashion. What's going on? How the rappers dressing today? Oh, they got their pants below their butt? I'm going to wear my pants below my butt too. That's what God, read that again, Isaac, and that ye? And that ye seek not after your own heart and your own eyes, after which you use to go a whoring. You see them little funny looking sneakers right Go back up, Abby, y'all. See them little funny, you know, back up. See them funny sneakers right there? Negroes, them things is expensive as hell. $900, some of them things. Negroes be buying them things. That's you crazy. Wicked as hell. So this is what the scriptures is teaching us here. Read that again, Isaac. Numbers 15 and verse 39. And it shall be upon you for a fringe that you may look upon it and remember all the commandments of the Lord and do them. And do them, come on. And that ye seek not after your own heart. Seek not after your own heart, come on. And your own eyes. And your own eyes. Because we read that in First John about the lust of the eyes, did we not? The lust of the eyes. What do we lust after? We lust after what we see, more or less. Go ahead. After which you used to go a whoring. After which you used to go a whoring. But Achan decided, now this, Achan was way later. During the time of Joshua, Moses had died already. Achan said, I know what Moses taught us, but <laughs> that Babylonian garment right there, I could re I'll look stylish as hell in that thing. Okay, from there. Why did the Most High said after which you used to go a horn? Why is he saying that? What's happening during this time of history? I gave you some hints about what I was saying earlier. Because when, because when Israel was in Egypt, that's what we was doing, whoring after them. Right. And the Most High was telling Moses to break our minds away from Egypt. That's what's got to go down now. We've got to break our minds from the, from the horrors, fa from these fashions here. Exactly. The same thing all over again. Same to go to Zephaniah 1 and 8. Zephaniah 1 and 8. Because some people come up to us in camp and say, God don't care what you, what you have on, what you dress like. Oh, yes, he does. Never let a Negro deceive you back into sin. Because they'll, if you let them, they'll do it. They're going to die, you're going to die. Zephaniah 1 and 8. Zephaniah 1 and verse 8. And it shall come to pass in the day of the Lord's sacrifice that I will punish the princes and the king's children and all such as are clothed with strange apparel. That's a prophecy. Because the clothes you wear dictate your faith. 
You know a Muslim by the way he dresses, he or she dresses. You know what religion they're into. You know what faith they have. If you see a Buddhist, you know, based on the clothes they have on, what they're into. Okay? So likewise amongst the children of Israel, the most, the most High gave us, our ancestors, a dress code. He gave us a dress code. We're supposed to love that thing, honor that thing, dress according to that law. Be ash you ashamed? Are you kidding me? You want to look like an American. You're insane. Yes. People forget the um, America, it's primarily based off Egyptology and Babylonian customs when you really dig deep. Now, a lot of the customs and trends reflect that. And if you look at fashion today, now everybody's starting to rock pyramids on their shirts, the Eye of Ra. So history is repeating itself. And back in Egypt, people also did a lot of baldies. There were certain styles and fashions and mannerisms or ways that they did that in reality has crept back into society today. And people don't realize it. Exactly. I hope you all understand that. This is a remix. This era is a remix. So now, and now being born again, we got to dress according to God's commandments. Now, sometimes you, you may lust or covet after clothing, but sometimes, maybe that's not your thing. Because everybody ain't got the same covetous spirit. Maybe some people covet after power, after preeminence. Let's look at that. Go to 1 Kings 16 and 8. 1 Kings chapter 16 and verse 8. In the twenty and sixth year of Asa, king of Judah, began Elah, the son of Basha, to reign over Israel in Terza, two years. So, because remember, Israel was split into two kingdoms. So, when the king Asa was ruling in Judah over the kingdom of Israel, you had what's his name? Elah, the son of Basha. Go ahead. And his servant Zimri, captain and half, captain of, captain of half his chariots conspired against him. So one of the captains of Israel conspired against the king of Israel. Go ahead. As he was in Terza, drinking himself drunk in the house of Arzah, steward of his house in Terza. So he was waiting till the king got drunk. The king got pissy drunk. Go ahead. And Zimri went in and smote him and killed him in the 20 and 7th year of Asa, king of Judah, and reigned in his stead. And it came to pass, when he began to reign, as soon as he sat on his throne, that he slew all the house of Basha, he left him not one that pisseth against the wall. He didn't leave nobody, even of the poor, that followed him. He killed everybody. Go ahead. Neither of his kinsfolks, nor of his friends. Thus did Zimri destroy all the house of Basha, according to the word of the Lord which he spake against Basha by Jehu the prophet. So his covetousness was power. He wanted to be king. That was his thing. It wasn't a garment. He said, hell, it's good to be the king. He said, I'm going to kill the king and sit upon the throne. And when you read the book of Kings and Chronicles, you read about a lot of conspiracy amongst our people. Okay, watch this. Here's another one. Third John, New Testament. Third John. Third John, verse 9. I wrote unto the church, but Diotrephes, who loveth to have the preeminence among them, receiveth us not. Look at that name, Diotrephes. It says, who loveth to have the preeminence. He wanted to be the top teacher in Israel. He wanted to be known as number one. That was his sin. Covetousness. Read it again. I wrote unto the church, but Diotrephes, who loveth to have the preeminence among them, receiveth us not. Do y'all know who John is? This is less the, what they call John the Less. He was one of the apostles. Followed Christ, walked with Christ. Diotrephus wasn't even known like that, but he, as we read on, let's see what he did against the followers of Christ, the disciples. Wherefore, if I come, I will remember his deeds which he doeth, Prating against us, prating against pr us, prating against us with malicious words, meaning name calling, all the verbal abuse. Nay, I gotta, I'm gonna call you this. You're that. You're that. I hate you. You ain't right. The same evil that you see today on YouTube is what we're reading about right here. Read it again. Wherefore, if I come, I will remember his deeds which he doeth. 
Pratting against us with malicious words. I hope you die. I hate you. I can't stand you. Let's send them pray, pray, uh, curses. Lord, uh, Ryan, ah! It's the same BS. Go ahead. And not content therewith, neither doth he himself receive the brethren, and forbiddeth them that would, and casteth them out of the church. Any of the followers of Christ that was amongst him that wanted to visit the apostles, he would tell them, don't come back. You can't come back here. That's some evil right there. And these men, walk, John and them, walked with Christ, ate with Christ, drunk with Christ. This little dude here who learned a few scriptures running his mouth. Yes. But dang, that's just like what's happening today. When you got these brothers in these other schools, and they mention, well, why are y'all so, so angry at Nathaniel? What was wrong with his United Christ? You know what? Get out. Yep, that's, that's exactly what happened. Out. They throw him out. They throw them out. Same thing. But what we're reading here, his, this brother Diotrephes, the sinner he had once again, covetousness. He loved to have the preeminence. He wanted to be number one. He could not work with the apostles. Why? He got the devil on him. He didn't want nobody to be know a little more than him or be greater than him. Hell, I wish the 12, we knew who the 12 was. Them men walked with Christ. They saw some, they heard and learned things nobody else heard or learned. I'd be at, you'd be at their footsteps. Just talking to him constantly. What, what did Christ mean when he said such and such? What do you mean? But not a Negro, not a wicked, evil Negro, no. He gonna exalt himself above the apostles. You learn five scriptures and you know so much. You know everything. From there, let's go to Acts chapter eight. The book of Acts chapter eight and verse 18. Here's another claim for power. And when Simon saw that through laying on of the apostles' hands, the Holy Ghost was given, he offered them money. Can you imagine this? This Negro Simon, he saw the apostles lay hands on people and they, they got the gift of the Holy Spirit. He said, I'll give, how much you want for me to get, learn, get that gift that y'all got? You want $1,000, $2,000, $3,000. Whatever you want, I'll give you the money. Just give me that power you got. Read. Saying, give me also this power that on whomsoever I lay hands, he may receive the Holy Ghost. But Peter said unto him, Thy money perish with thee, because thou hast thought that the gift of God may be purchased with money. You see that? He didn't understand what he was into. He following them thinking he could get this understanding through money. You can't get this through money. This is a spiritual war. This is a spiritual fight. This is a spiritual walk. Okay? From there, let's go to Acts 5. Let's talk about more about money. Money, because money is, a, is the demon of a lot of us. We've seen the greatest of friends break up in this truth over money. We've seen schools torn apart over money. The love of money, the love of money. Acts 5 and 1. Acts 5 and verse 1. But a certain man named Ananias with Sapphira, his wife sold a possession and kept back part of the price, his wife also being privy to So it. I want you women to listen good, who know what your husbands are doing. So this dude kept part of the money back. She said, yeah, that's good. Let's not give them all that money. They don't need it. We could use that thing. Go ahead. And brought a certain part and laid it at the apostles' feet. But Peter said, Ananias, why, why hath Satan Fill thine heart to lie to the Holy Ghost and to keep back part of the price of the land. Watch this. Whilst it remained, was it not thine own? And after it was sold, was it not in thine own power? Right. Meaning, what is he saying? Who can explain that to me? Abiel. What he was, what he was saying is that you could have said, listen, I sold, I sold the property for such and such. I need something from that to take care of my business. Exactly. Just deal honestly. Deal right. Go ahead. Why hast thou conceived this thing in thine heart? Thou hast not lied unto men, but unto God. Come on. And Ananias, hearing these words, fell down and gave up the ghost. He dropped dead. Go ahead. And great fear came on all them that heard these things. And the young men arose, wound him up, and carried him out, and buried him. <clears throat> 
And it was about the space of three hours after when his wife, not knowing what was done, came in. Now here comes the little wife. Tiptoe through the tulips. Here she comes. Right, she just came from shopping. <laughs> right, go ahead. And Peter answered unto her, Tell me whether you sold the land for so much. And she said, Yea, for so much. So she lied too. Go ahead. Then Peter said unto her, How is it that ye have agreed together to tempt the spirit of the Lord? Behold, the feet of them which have buried thy husband are at the door, and shall carry thee out. Then fell she down straightway at his feet, and yielded up the ghost. And the young men came in, and found her dead, and carrying her forth, buried her by her husband. And great fear came upon all the church, and upon as many as heard these things. See what covetous can do for you? Cause you to lie. Lie and be deceitful. That's what you learn when you read this history here. The deceitfulness of riches. Go to 1 Timothy 6 and 9. 1 Timothy 6 and verse 9. But they that will be rich fall into temptation. That's what happens with a lot of our people. They want to be rich. Okay, the drug dealer. The weed seller. We want that quick money. Quick money. Or we get into some kind of foolishness with um, these acting. Music business. A lot of that's quick, good money to make riches. Read again. But they that will be rich fall into temptation and a snare and into many foolish and hurtful lusts. Right. Look at Michael Jackson. All those kids that was allegedly, why was they sleeping at his house? Why was they in the bed with the boy, with the man? Huh? Parents knew what they was doing. Sleep over at Mikey's. We can get some money. Or oh, what's the little girl that R. Kelly was urinating on? They never gave her name. Little thirteen-year-old girl. They also don't want a video. I know I ain't the only one that saw that. <laughs> the hell is this? But the parents knew where them little kids was at. Aaliyah, Matt. Well, he didn't urinate. Well, maybe he did, but she, she married that dude, and she was like what, fifteen, something like that. Got into all kind of wickedness. A lot of these, what we call uh, superstars in the music world and all that. Read that verse again. But they that will be rich fall into temptation and a snare, and into many foolish and hurtful lusts, which drown men in destruction and perdition. Y'all saw the y'all guys see the movie Lady Sings the Blues. No, no, what's that? Not Lady Sings the Blues. The other one, Mahogany, the fashion model. And there's another movie. Write this down if y'all can. Rent this movie or buy it. It's called The Black Starlet. You ever see that? The Black Starlet. The black woman wanted to be a famous movie star. And the director of the movie said, okay, you wanna make it in this business? You have to sleep with the producers. She said, okay. She said, you're a producer, right? He says, yeah. She didn't hear his words. He said, yeah, I'm a producer. Bang, 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 bang. This is the end of the movie. She's get, he getting out of the bed. He saw getting out of the bed, putting his clothes on. She saw getting out of the bed. He said, wait, my dear, what are you doing? She said, oh, you said all I had to do was sleep with the producer. She says, who are all those men? She said, my dear, they're producers too. It was like 15 Edomite men standing outside the room. She saw crying. Look at, she's crying and crying. They're all taking turns, going and banging her. Read the verse again. But they that will be rich fall into temptation and a snare and into many foolish and hurtful lusts which drown men in destruction and perdition. The next one, what's the little light-skinned red bone boys called? B, B, B2K. What was the dude banging them? I forgot his name. What was his name? The producer, Chris Stokes. Chris Stokes. But this guy had it, Mark, Marky Houston. The B2K put videos out and was saying that these dudes was raping them from little. All the boy, black Israelite boy groups, they was all getting molested. Every last one of them. And they kept a secret. Yeah, that's him right there, that one. What's his name? Chris Stokes. Right, Chris Stokes speaks on the homosexual encounters with B2K. That's it right there. And this ain't the only thing. They, they got it down. You want to make it big in this business? There's certain things you got, you got to give up the booty. Y'all don't be shocked. Y'all look at what? I never heard of such a thing. Oh, you thought the music business was so righteous and upstanding. 
You are insane. Isaac, can you read that again for us? First Timothy 6 and 9. But they that will be rich fall into temptation and a snare, and into many foolish and hurtful lusts, which drown men in destruction. Now, let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. Even amongst the uh, NYPD different police agencies, they got this thing where they leave money, large sums, in the subway, leave it on benches, <coughs> and they wait to see. And they all, there was a big thing on the news because there's some lawsuits going on where they do that and put it in poor neighborhoods. And they sit across the street, down the block with cameras to see which Negro or Latino is going to pick it up. Let him take something. Let him walk to his house. Just let him go. Wait a few days. Let him spend it because every bill is marked. Be mindful in this world. Be very, all I could do is warn y'all, be very mindful. You will get set up and end up in jail. Okay, read that again, Isaac. First Timothy 6 and verse 9. But they that will be rich fall into temptation and a snare, and into many foolish and hurtful lusts, which drown men in destruction and perdition. For the love of money is the root of all evil. Now, I always tell y'all about that welfare scandal stuff. I tell y'all, I tell y'all. You sisters, some of y'all like to manipulate the system. All I can do is warn you. There's a brother that I know who shall remain nameless. He might be online, but I won't say his name. He decided to go and, and scam the welfare thing. Um, he had an off-the-books job. They found out he had an off-the-books job. By this time, he owed. They, they sent him a letter. They say you owe us about... $2,500. He's crying and all upset. I said, bro, be glad you could go. I said, the fine print says you can go get two years in jail. I said, just pay the money back. I warned you about that. Women do that all the time. Play that game. My husband, he left me. Meanwhile, the husband laying right next to him in bed. He left me. He ain't right. Can I get some welfare unemployment? They go, okay. Can no man be around? I said, sister, you better read that fine print down there. If they find out that that man's still living there, you're going to get in trouble. I ain't going to catch me. Sure enough, next year. They ain't knocking on my house. They're going to lock me up. Go to jail. Sister, I warned you. I told you what I'm going to do. Pay the money back. Just pay it back. Make out a, a, a payment plan with him. Esau is coming down on. A lot of black people think Esau don't, they, that they sleep on things. They coming down on our people on now. I'm telling y'all, all I can do is warn y'all. Some of y'all in here. Let me start on that side. Some of y'all in here might be involved in some of that stuff. All I can do is warn y'all. Maybe a few brothers, maybe, maybe, maybe. But they out there. They, got, they are hiring people to follow you, see what you do. You see on, you got jobs that say um, uh, when you're injured. You know what's that called? you injured on the job. Workers comp. And the dude ain't hurt. He's out lifting trucks. He's out doing all, and they videotaping him. Look at him right there. There he goes. There he goes. Look, he just lifted up a motor. He's climbing up a ladder now. He's fixing the roof. Look what he's doing. He's coming down now. Then they go to court, and you in trouble. You in trouble. Read that again, Isaac. For the love of money is the root of all evil, which while some coveted after, they have erred from the faith. They have erred from the faith. Because the faith teaches us, thou shalt not, what? Thou shalt not covet. Go ahead. And pierced themselves through with many sorrows. Yeah, the many sorrows, jail. You got to pay back large sums. Many sorrows. Many, many. Some of them, you catching venereal diseases because you decide to give up the butt because you want a certain position. Yeah, okay. Bend over. Now you got VD, gonorrhea, AIDS, syphilis. Lord Jesus, how ah, ah, help me? From there, <laughs> let's go to Ezekiel 14. Isaac, we're going to Ezekiel 14. Let's start at verse 1. I'm going to show you something. Because a lot of us, some of y'all right now are thinking, well, I'm not covetous. That's not my thing. Covetous covers a lot of Remember, covetousness starts where, Barack Bar? In the mind. You got to examine yourself. Know thyself. Ezekiel chapter 14 and verse 1. Watch this. 
Then came certain of the elders of Israel unto me, and sat before me. And the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, these men have set up their idols in their heart. I want you to pay close attention to that part. The son of man, these men have set up their idols in their heart, meaning in their mind. There's idols in their mind. Go ahead. And put the stumbling block of their iniquity before their face. Should I be inquired of at all by them? Therefore speak unto them and say unto them, Thus saith the Lord God, Every man of the house of Israel that setteth up his idols in his heart and putteth the stumbling block of his iniquity before his face and cometh to the prophet, I, the Lord, will answer him that cometh according to the multitude of his idols. So whatever's in your mind that you put before the Most High, guess what it is? It's an idol. It's an idol. It's covetousness. Go ahead. That I may take the house of Israel in their own heart, because they are all estranged from me through their idols. I made a statement. I said that that idol is covetousness. Can y'all get the, give me that in Colossians 3 and 5? This is the proof. That whatever's in your mind that you got, you hold as an idol over God, over the Most High, it's an idol. Here's the proof, Colossians 3 and 5. Colossians 3 and verse 5. Mortify therefore your members which are upon the earth. Come on. Fornication. Fornication, sexual sins, come on. Uncleanness. Uncleanness. Inordinate affection. Inordinate affection. Evil concupiscence. Evil concupiscence. And covetousness. And covetousness. Go ahead. Which is idolatry. Which is idolatry. And covetousness, which is idolatry. And covetousness, which is idolatry. Anything that you lust after, covet after, it's an idol in your mind. It's something that you desire above what God says. It will cause you to break God's laws. Some people, they covet, their idol in their heart might be a car. You ever see a brother wash his car seven days a week? That's an idol to him. An idol, it gets one little bump, he loses his mind. Some brothers, it's sneakers, Air Jordans. They will spend three days in the winter cold to be led into a store to buy, is it Air Jordans? Is that the stupid sneakers they be buying? Buy them stupid sneakers, that's an idol. And don't dare step on them. He might put you to death if you step on his Air Jordans. Them things cost what? 185, 215, something like that? Huh? Yeah, 300. He'll put you to death if you stepped on his Air Jordans. Our people are crazy. Those things are idols in their heart. Idols. Okay? Let's go back to Ezekiel 14. Ezekiel chapter 14 and verse 6. Therefore say unto the house of Israel, Thus saith the Lord God, Repent! And turn yourselves from your idols and turn away your faces from all your abominations. Y'all see that? So that whatever we hold dear, when we wake up, we think about it. During the day, we think about it. At night, you, th you know how sometimes you wake up? Something, not everybody. You wake up, what is, give me something, give me something that people think about. Some of y'all wake up and think about breasts. That's all you can think about. You wake up with breasts on your mind. You, during the day, you're thinking about breasts. You're going to sleep with a pair of breasts. You're just thinking about it. That is your idol. But what about praying fast? I ain't got time for that. I'm thinking about these 234Ds right here. You're on the internet. You're on the computer. You're on your phone. Ooh, ooh. That's an idol. That's an idol. On my job, is it, I ain't going to mention his name. On my job, we be sitting there talking, doing the work, whatever we're doing. He's always on his phone. One day, we, what is he always doing on that phone? Every kind of movie, porn movie you can imagine. He's, <laughs> he's sitting in the corner. <laughs> so what the hell is going on in this corner? An idol. An idol. That's his idol. <laughs> now, we want to change gears a little bit. Go get me 1 Corinthians 7.31. Now, we all know we got to work in this world. We got to do things in this world. Just to get by, to make ends meet, whatever we got to do in this world. Christ spoke through the Apostle Paul. He gave us a message. Because some of y'all, when it comes to this work, you put your job and your personal life ahead of God's word. Watch this. You got it, Isaac? Yes, sir. 
1 Corinthians 7 and verse 31. I want y'all to listen good. And they that use this world as not abusing it. Now, all of us in here are to use this world. Use this world. Get what you can get lawfully. Listen good. Lawfully. Read it again. And they that use this world as not abusing you it. You know what? As not abusing it. As not abusing it. Don't do anything illegal to get yourself locked up. And don't put it ahead of God's word. Every time you call a brother, can you hold class? I got to work, brother. Can you do this? I got to work, brother. Can you do this? I got to work, brother. How can we never see you? I got to work, brother. Everything is work, work, work. Why? To make his or her pockets fat. Read it again. And they that use this world as not abusing it, for the fashion of this world passeth away. You got to know that this world we live in in Babylon is temporary. It's going to be destroyed. So you're giving your whole heart, your whole life to your job, what you're doing outside of this truth, you're wasting your time because it's going to pass away. Budget your time, budget your money, budget everything properly, okay? Because this world is going to end. This kingdom is destined to end according to God. Okay, read it again. And they that use this world as not abusing it, for the fashion of this world passeth away. So I want, especially you officers, I want you officers to understand that. You up and coming officers too. Now watch this. Give me Exodus 18, 21. The book of Exodus, chapter 18 and verse 21. Moreover, thou shalt provide out of all the people able men, such as fear God, men of truth, hating covetousness. Let's read that again. Listen good. Moreover, thou shalt provide out of all the people able men, such as fear God, men of truth, hating covetousness, and place such over them to be rulers of thousands and rulers of hundreds, rulers of fifties and rulers of tens. And let them judge the people at all seasons. So I want you officers especially to pay close attention to that. And let them... Start again. 21. Verse, Exodus 18 and verse 21. Moreover, thou shalt provide out of all the people able men, such as fear God. Such as what? Such as fear God. Such as what? Such as fear God. We all need to examine ourselves. Go ahead. Men of truth, hating covetousness. Hating covetousness. Now I'll give you another one. People will send us, I, 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 I like to give a test now and then, but I do a quiet test. I'll say this. Now, those of you that are guilty, I'm just bringing it out. I ain't going to point the finger at you. Sister sent some clothes that's in the box. Now, I got the box. I'll say the box is back there against the wall. And I'll wait to see who jumped from the table to run back there to be the first one in it. Then I'll just look and listen. Hmm. Read that again, Isaac. Moreover, Thou shalt provide out of all the people able men, such as fear God, men of truth, hating covetousness. You know why it says that? Because our job is to look after who? The flock. Not ourselves, but the flock. Go ahead. And place such over them to be rulers of thousands and rulers of hundreds, rulers of fifties and rulers of tens. And let them judge the people at all seasons. And it shall be that every great matter they shall bring unto thee, but every small matter they shall judge. This is what Paul was talking about in 1 Corinthians 6. Go ahead. So shall it be easier for thyself, and they shall bear the burden with thee. Now watch this. Give me Jeremiah 3.15. Jeremiah 3.15. Now this is just, this lesson is go just for all of us to examine ourselves. We all in this truth, yes, we stumble, we fall, but let's get it right. The Most High is not going to bring in the multitudes if we are still stumbling over the small things. What you're going to find out in this truth, the Most High is going to, it's mute, like, what else you tell us all the time? Musical chairs. Musical chairs. Brothers come in, take a seat, Most High goes, now move him out the way. He ain't worthy. He's full of S. S. Get me, um, what did I say go? Jeremiah 3, 15. Read on. And I will give you pastors according to mine heart, 
which shall feed you with knowledge and understanding. Read again. And I will give you pastors according to mine heart, which shall feed you with knowledge and understanding. Maybe the problem is y'all don't see yourselves as the great men that God says you are. Maybe that's it. Do you think that could possibly be it? Do you think that could possibly be it? Maybe those of us in here have such a low self-esteem that when it comes to guiding the people, you have a fearful heart. That's what I'm starting to think it is. Um, Abiel, can you show us the video, please? I want y'all to pay close attention to this video. Now look in the mirror and tell me what you see. I see Junior. You see Junior. Well, you want to know what I see? I see pride. I see power. I see a badass mother who don't take no crap of nobody. You really see all that? Yeah, man. But it's not about what I see. It's about what you see. Now look in this mirror and tell me again what you see. <clears throat> well, I see... Pride! Pride! Right. Power! Power! And I see... A badass mother who, who don't won't take, take no, no crap off of nobody! Again! I see pride! Can I hear you? I see power! I see a badass mother who won't take no crap off of nobody. Once again! I see pride! Junior! I see power! I see a badass mother who won't take no crap off of nobody! That's right! That's right! Junior Bevel! Wait, what? Where do you go? <laughs> now, that's a, that, I love that clip. I love that clip. This is how we all have to be when we read these scriptures. That's what we got to see ourselves in these scriptures. Give me that Proverbs 23 and 7. Proverbs 23 and 7 exemplifies what we just saw right there on the screen. Proverbs 23 and verse 7. For as he thinketh in his heart, so is he. Read it again. For as he thinketh in his heart, so is he. Read it again. For as he thinketh in his heart, so is he. Read it again. For as he thinketh in his heart, so is he. Again. For as he thinketh in his heart, so is he. Do y'all hear what God is telling you? That's what God is telling each and every one of us. As you think in your mind, so are you. If you think you ain't SH, if you're fearful, you're going to be that way the rest of your life. And you know what amazes me? Some of y'all used to be top drug dealers. You used to be on the street whooping butt out there. But now you're coming here, I'm just scared. I, you put off the, the rough nature you had and became a mouse. That amazes me. What kind of, what's, is that the same dude that was on the corner? Malachi, is that the same dude that was on the corner? What the hell's going on here? That mealy mouth, squishy marshmallow boy right there? Squeamish, yellow makes me sad. What the hell is this? Isaac, can you read that again for us? Proverbs 23, verse 7. For as he thinketh in his heart, so is he. So that tells us a lot of us got low, we suffer from low self-esteem. If we always believe we're on the bottom, we're going to stay that way. Our mind, the Bible is being born again, begins where? Give me that in 2 Ezra 14 and, y'all know what I want, 32, something like that. Not that, 34, that one. 2 Ezra 4, give me that. 2 Ezra chapter 14 and verse 34. Therefore, if so be that ye will subdue your own understanding. Subdue your own understanding. And reform your hearts. And reform. The word reform means change. Change your heart, meaning change your mind. From what you used to be to what God says you are. Read. You shall be kept alive. You shall be kept alive. And after death, you shall obtain mercy. Because you're going to inherit eternal life. Give me the one now about put off the weak nature. Where's that one at? 14, 14. Jump up to verse 14. Is that it? Yes, sir. Come on. Verse 14. Let go from thee mortal thoughts. Let go from you mortal thoughts, God says to us. Come on. Cast away the burdens of man. Cast away the burdens of man. Put off now the weak nature. Read it again. Put off now the weak nature. Read it again. Put off now the weak nature. That's the problem with the black and Latin man. We are filled with the weak nature. God says, put it off. If you want to be used of the most high God, you must put it off. I'm scared, filled with excuses. I can't. What if this might stop it? Read it again. Let go from the mortal thoughts. 
Cast away the burdens of men. Put off now the weak nature and set aside the thoughts that are most heavy unto thee. Whatever's most heavy unto you, God says, put it aside. Them things you worry about doing your day, day put it aside. Is there more to that? And, right. and haste thee to flee from these times. And haste thee to flee from these times. I don't know about y'all, but I haste to flee in these times. And I need brothers around me who, read it again, Isaac, this is the type of brothers I need around me. Let go from the mortal thoughts. Cast away the burdens of men. Put off now the weak nature. And set aside the thoughts that are most heavy unto thee. Abiel's distracting me. Abiel, what are you doing? I'm seeing Michael Jordan crying on the screen. Can we go back to that? <laughs> guy. Well, was, I, I look up. I see the big grown Michael Jordan crying on the screen. But we got to put off that weak nature, brothers. Put it off. Read it again, Isaac. And look at, I don't see Esau. Let me see our people. They got to see themselves. Because this is how you black and Latin men are when you come into the truth. That's that right there. Blow that one up big right there. There's some of you in here. Yeah. <laughs> Read that again, Isaac. Let go from the mortal thoughts. Cast away the burdens of men. Put off now the weak nature. Put off now the weak nature. Read that again, Isaac. Let go from the mortal thoughts. Cast away the burdens of man. Put off now the weak nature. Here we go, right? Look at this guy. You know what this reminds me of? Y'all remember we was reading, y'all remember we was reading the history on Jezebel? Where the king Ahab crying because the because the brother wouldn't sell the uh, vineyard to him. And he wouldn't eat. <laughs> He's all sad on the bed, all crying. Y'all remember that? Yep. So, and then he had to go to his woman. His woman said, you know what? Your sad self. I'll get it for you. That's terrible. Go ahead. So right now, some of y'all are thinking, where, trying to figure out where am I going? Where am I going? Read again, Isaac. Let go from the mortal thoughts. Cast away the burdens of men. Put off now the weak nature. And set aside the thoughts that are most heavy unto thee. Some of you worried about a woman. She might, le she might leave you. What you crying for? There's a lot more women out there. But if I force this truth or tell her to do something, she might leave. Let the hoe go. Let her go. She ain't worth your time. That's that weak nature. There's a lot of weak brothers up in jail. They're bad with bro bro the street. Bad. But when it comes to the woman, yes, dear. Okay, hon. I understand. Read again, Isaac. Verse 14. Let go from the mortal thoughts. Cast away the burdens of men. Put off now the weak nature. That's what I want. Put off now the weak nature. You got a lot of men weak up in here, not just in the online, weak to a woman. You have some of you have caught your woman texting other men. Rather than let the hoe go, you hold it all down. No, you mind, you mind. Let the hoe go. She ain't worth it. She ain't no good. You're trying to hold on to her. She a baboon. She ain't right. There's something wrong with her. <laughs> Trying to hold on to her. Now, I'm telling y'all, in this truth, give me that one. Get me, uh, watch this. Uh, get me Matthew 25. I'm going to show all you men something. Because y'all come in this truth, you, you read the scripture, I'll give you pastors according to my mind, which shall feed you with knowledge, wisdom, and understanding. You go, yeah, the Bible, yeah, the scriptures, yeah. Scriptures, the scriptures. Some of y'all are y'all y'all are content to being church boys, and I'm gonna explain what I mean by church boys. You have figured in your mind that Israel, the nation of Israel, is like the Baptist church, where men and women sit in the basement and read scriptures all day. <sighs> the scriptures, <sighs> the scriptures. And that's it. It's more than that. I'm going to show you all something. Matthew 25, 31. Watch this. Matthew. Some of y'all are going to get scared right now. But I don't care. You can leave. We got two doors. Watch this. Matthew 25 and verse 31. When the Son of Man shall come in his glory, and all the holy angels with him, 
Then shall he sit upon the throne of his glory, and before him shall be gathered all nations. Who is the all nations that's going to be gathered before him? Somebody help me. Um, oh, Yahshua, let's see what you got. That's all the scattered Israelites that are in all the nations. Thank you. Do you hear what he said? That's the scattered Israelites in all the nations. That is the scattered Israelites. Can, can you give me that, Isaac? James 1 and 1. Then I want Ezekiel 34, I think it's 1 through 3 or something like that. 17? Okay. Let's see who these all coming out of all these nations. James chapter 1 verse 1. James, a servant of God and of, and of the Lord Jesus Christ to the 12 tribes which are scattered abroad. Greeting. Now let's go to Ezekiel 34 and 17. Thank you all. Ezekiel 34, 17 is the proper precept for Matthew 25, 31 down. Ezekiel 34 and 17. And as for you, O my flock, thus saith the Lord God, behold, I judge between cattle and cattle, between the rams and the he goats. Jump over to verse 1, verse 2, so we know who he's talking about. Verse 2. Son of man, prophesy against the shepherds of Israel. Prophesy against the shepherds of Israel. Go ahead. Prophesy and say unto them, thus saith the Lord God unto the shepherds, woe be to the shepherds of Israel that do feed themselves. Should not the shepherds feed the flocks? Jump back to 17 now. Verse 17. And as for you, O my flock, thus saith the Lord God, behold, I judge between cattle and cattle, between the rams and the he goats. Now let's go back to Matthew 25. Hmm. And we're gonna get to, we're gonna go through this a little bit slow. I want y'all, I want you officers. I want everybody to understand it, but especially you officers. You mamby pamby brothers. <laughs> Matthew 25 and 31. Matthew 25 verse 31. When the Son of Man shall come in his glory, and all the holy angels with him, then shall he sit upon the throne of his glory, and before him shall be gathered all nations. Like was said, Israel coming out of all nations. Go ahead. And he shall separate them one from another. As a shepherd divideth his sheep from the goats. Didn't we just read that in Ezekiel 34, 17? He will judge between, what he said? Cattle and goats, something like that. What? Read on. And he shall set the sheep on his right hand, but the goats on the left. Come on. Then shall the king say unto them on his right hand, Come, ye blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was in hunger, and he gave me meat. I was thirsty, and he gave me drink. I was a stranger, and he took me in. Naked, and he clothed me. I was sick, and he visited me. I was in prison, and he came unto me. Then shall the righteous answer him, saying, Lord, when saw we thee in hunger, and fed thee, or thirsty, and gave thee drink? When saw we thee a stranger, and took thee in? Or naked and clothe thee, or when saw we, th and when saw we thee sick or in prison and came unto thee, and the king shall answer and say unto them, Verily I say unto you, inasmuch as ye have done it unto one of the uh, one of the least of these my brethren, ye have done it unto me. Let's pause right there. Who can explain that? Who can explain that? This is bad because. The spirit that the elders trying to bring out of y'all is showing by y'all not being able to answer that y'all are not ready to guide the people and help the people. Because y'all should know this based on what he's saying here. He has people on his left hand side. He has people on his right hand side. Okay? In the beginning he's speaking about the people on his right hand side. What's going to be given unto them? Wait. Wait. wait, wait. You going into the goats? Yes. Oh, you going into the, oh. Yes. He's about. explaining to them. Oh, he's, right, telling, right. he's telling you about the things that they did for the people. And then he calls them blessed. Then when he goes to the bottom, he speaks about the people who did nothing. The people who did not care. I just gave you all major clues. He, all right. hands should go up. Right. All hands should be up. If all you men in this room are leaders, all your hands should be up. Y'all should be able to explain this. Because what the elders telling you is, this is your job. Everybody in this room 
is going to have a part either on the left hand side or on the right hand side. So after you read this here, the elder's trying to show you what you've been called in here to do. That's why he lined it up with the, the foolishness that happened on Tuesday. If you're about being on the right hand side of Christ, that foolishness on Tuesday wouldn't have went down. That's why the elder took you here. Now, all hands should go up. That's what I was listening for, and I didn't hear that. What ASAP just brought out was what I, what I heard was being read, and I didn't hear that. Because brothers because are not in that spirit. Especially the latter part of it. When they were asking, when do we see you are hungry and we didn't feed you and all that. That's the part I want to hear. Because that pertains to this Tuesday. Okay, the, the, men, of, the men that Christ is looking for are men that are in the body, in the congregation, looking for the needs of the people. Who needs food? Who needs money? Who needs clothes? Who needs counseling? Who needs to be taught on Tuesday? Who needs help with a problem? Who's going through situation? The elder calls us someone sick. Which one of you brothers is going to go to the hospital and pray? Who's going to go to visit the sister? Who's going to go speak with this person? That is your job. That's why he gave the analogy of some of you want to play PlayStation. Some of you want to go to the movies. Some of you want to do everything but what Christ just said here. That's going to get you on the right hand side of him. So, Elder, please ask them again to explain the parable. Explain what we just read. Matthew 25. Ace already gave you the answer. Read 40 again. Matthew 25 and verse 40. And the king shall answer and say unto them, Verily I say unto you, Inasmuch as ye have done it unto one of the least of these my brethren, on Tuesday, who was the least of these? I gotta just put it out there. On Tuesday, who was the least of these? All hands should be up, bro. Pick the hands that are not going up. <laughs> Pick the hands that are not going up, the men that are in positions of leadership, and make them explain. Because now I'm nervous. Zakai. I'm nervous now. The least of them would have been the newcomers, the new brothers who just coming into the school. That would have been the least of, of the brethren. Okay. So when Christ said, because you haven't done it to them, you've also done it to me. Because that's why I say you was hot when you started off, because if we, would, we understand that Christ is in all of us. We're supposed to be willing to do this for the people, to feed the flock. And the, and the question was, well, Christ, when do we see you? And when do we not do this to you? Christ said, it ain't about me, it's about them. I told y'all, some of y'all in here see this truth as the worldly church, where you just go, that's scriptures, yeah, it's scriptures, scriptures. It's more than that. It's more than that. Asaph gave y'all the answer right there. Your job is bigger than what you imagine. Because the disciples of Christ understood it, this truth is more than just about reading the scriptures. Yes, yeah, scriptures, read the Bible, read the Bible, we're reading the Bible. This truth is about action. This truth is about doing. And this is what the disciples showed us. And you're going to realize that when we start to apply these simple basic things, it's going to separate us from a lot of Israelite camps. Because just like I'm saying, there's a lot of Israelite camps out there, but a lot of them are just about, read the scriptures, just read scriptures, scriptures, scriptures. But what are they doing for our people when they come in? Nothing. Reading scriptures. Okay, we read the scriptures. Now what? Everybody wants I can't feed my family. I can't do this. Send somebody help me. Everybody. Read a verse. Right. Just read a verse. What is that going to do for me? Watch this. Elder. Acts 2.44. We're going we to come back. Acts 2 and verse 44. And all that believed were together and had all things common and sold their possessions and goods and parted them to all men as every man had need. And they continuing daily with one accord in the temple and breaking bread from house to house did eat their meat with gladness and singleness of heart praising God and having favor with all the people. And the Lord added to the church daily such as should be saved. Y'all see that? 
and the Lord added to the church daily such as should be saved. You see the first part you read, Isaac, about what did they do? Read that part again. What verse is it? Verse 44. Come on. And all that believed were together and had all things common. Had all things common. Come on. And sold their possessions. So if they had extra, they sold their extra possessions. That's what it's talking about, right? And, and tell me why. Go ahead. And goods. And parted them to all men. The all men are all the believers that came into the truth. Go ahead. As every man had need. As what? As every man had need. As what? As, as every man had need. Your job, brothers, black man, Latin man, is to look out after your brothers and sisters that have need. If they have need, you as a leader is to fulfill the need. Not just if they have no food. What is reading a scripture to them going to do? If they have no clothes to wear, what is reading a scripture going to do for them? Nothing. Let's get that in James now. James told you about you faith only, brothers. That's why I said some of you are, read the scripture, scripture's rare, yeah. Church, hold up, church, hold up. church. That's why I said to you the other day, some brothers, all they got the spirit to do is go and scream at people. Right. And when the people want help later on, y'all have nothing. Y'all got big mouths. Y'all ready to go and rip people apart and blast them? Or when it comes to helping them, you have nothing up your sleeves. Nothing. No system. What the elder read in Acts was there was a system in place. Okay, people are going to come to us after we've read them the scriptures. Let's put something in place so when they come to us, we can help them. We can assist them when they're telling us about real day-to-day -day problems that they're having. Because it's easy for you to memorize some scriptures and then go rip somebody apart, try to build them back up. A real man knows how to build people back up, how to take their time and build people back up. Some of you are experts at ripping people apart because that's all you know how to do. That's why you're quick to do that. But when it comes time to building people back up, Nothing is up your sleeves and nothing is in your pockets. I hope you all understood what he said. Read that. James 2 and what? 14. James 2 and verse 14. Listen good, especially you officers. What doth it profit, my brethren, though a man say he hath faith? Though a man, though. Though a man say he hath faith and have not works, can faith save him? If a brother or sister be naked and destitute of daily food. Didn't we just read that in Matthew 25? This is what we're reading in Matthew yep. 25. Go ahead. And one of you say unto them, Depart in peace, be ye warmed and filled. Notwithstanding ye give them not those things which are needful to the body. What doth it profit? Even so faith, if it hath not works, is dead. Y'all see that? Even so, faith, if it have not works, is dead. You got a lot of Israelite camps with faith. Everybody got faith, but nobody want to do nothing. Read. Even so, faith, if it have not works, is dead, being alone. Yea, a man may say, thou hast faith, and I have works. Show me thy faith without thy works, and I will show thee my faith by my works. Thou believest that there is one God, thou doest well. The devils also believe and tremble. Now that's heavy. So those of you who just have faith but will not do nothing, uh, James is saying you're no different than devils. You're no different than devils because demons know that there's one God. So what is the difference between you and the demon? You both got faith in one God. The demon ain't doing nothing to help the people. You ain't doing nothing to help the people. You're a devil. That's what James is telling us. So that's why I said this ain't about a church choir. This truth is about building the nation of Israel. They're going to come in sick. They're going to come in naked. They're going to come in hungry. It's not just read a verse. That's a part of it. I'm not knocking. That's the main thing. But behind that, we have to do those things necessary for them to survive. Things must be set in place. We need proper men in order who's going to help in this, in this work. Who is confused over what we're going over? Asaph, you want to say something? There's going to be confusion, trust me. The same way when I spoke last week and there was confusion. I was saying the same thing. I just didn't say it as, as hard as this, but that's what I was explaining. And there was confusion afterwards about meeting the needs of the people. That's what I came here for. 
Okay, I, I, I may not be able to memorize precepts like some of y'all, but when people need me, I try my best to be there. Because that's the, the spirit that I saw in Christ. And that's what I want to be known for. That's what, how I want to wind up on the right-hand side of Christ. I don't want to be known for how I blast the people and rip them apart. I want my reputation to be for I helped establish the nation and I did the will of the Most High. I brought the people back and I helped them. We can't help nobody in the estate that we are now. But like the Elder Red and Acts, the men had a plan in place. When people come, we must be able to deal with their needs and meet the needs of the people. Mm -hmm. And that's all the examples you read about Christ. That's why I asked y'all before, how many times did you see Christ blasting the people? He blasted the Pharisees, but he fed the people when they came. He paid their taxes when they came. And some of y'all don't, don't have a clue on that. And that's the mindset the elders trying to get you, you future leaders. All the men in this room are future leaders. That's the mindset you got to be in so that we could grow as a body. I've been watching this truth now since the 80s. Okay, it's going on 30 years. How many schools do you know of that you could go to that's going to help build you up and deal with your needs? How many schools? How many schools do y'all know of? That's why I told y'all before when we was in class when the sister was reaching out and I said the sister needs help. And I was getting on y'all because nobody, everybody was quick to tell her what she was doing wrong, but nobody had any way to help her. So I'm asking now, like I said before, y'all ripping up and calling her stupid. What school could y'all send her to where she could go and get help? Since y'all want to run them out of here and y'all don't want to help them, tell me the school. Tell me the name of another school that's set up, that's established to help and deal with the needs of the people. Because that's what the elders trying to do here. For the repenting Israelites, the ones that come with a sincere heart, okay, that want to be built up, that want to learn the most high and live their life as a repenting Israelite person, a system must be in place to deal with them, to help them grow so that they can help other brothers and sisters. So we can travel. Do you know how much people is calling us to travel? Right. How much people in how many places? And I'm tired of making excuses to them. Bahamas, Barbados, London, Canada. Okay, so many places that they're telling us, listen, we'll pay for you. Well, you can come stay in my house. Bring as much brothers as you want. But all y'all going to do is go out there, scream at them, and then tell them, be you warm and fill. <laughs> That's all y'all going to do. Y'all experts at that. Exactly. We got to learn to build. Once they're torn down and they want to repent, our job is to build them up. Provide for them those things that are necessary for the body. Get Romans 12 and 11. Watch this. The most, this truth is about God's business. That word business is, is alien to blacks and Latinos. Only time we hear that word is when we deal with the white man. Business. Yeah, I'm going to work. Business. Business. But business is expedient when it comes to the most high. The Bible tells you that. Romans 12 and verse 1. 11. Verse 11. Not slothful in business, fervent in spirit, serving the Lord. Read it again. Not slothful in business. So what do you think the Apostle Paul was talking about? He ain't talking about your business. He's talking about the Lord's business. The business of what? Feeding the flock. Not just with wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. That's the main thing, yes. But followed behind that is what? They may need food, clothing, shelter. They may need all those things necessary to live. It's our job to provide those things. Read it again. Not slothful in business, fervent in spirit, serving the Lord, rejoicing in hope, patient, patient in tribulation, continuing instant in prayer. Watch this. Here come. Distributing to the necessity of saints. Distributing to the necessity meaning the needs of the saints. How can we always black that out in our minds? Because blacks and Latinos, we ain't about nothing. We're a bunch of fake, phony brothers and sisters. And I just want to read the scriptures. Yeah, scriptures, read the Bible, read the Bible. But what you going to do about it? Come on, what you got? Read it again, and then give me one scripture. Romans 12 and verse 12. Rejoicing in hope. Patient in tribulation, continuing instant in prayer, 
distributing to the necessity of saints given to hospitality. Where, th was that the first verse you read? I need the no, first verse. 11. Verse 11. Not slothful in business. Not slothful in business. In business, come on. Fervent in spirit. That's the word I want, fervent. What does the word fervent mean? Revelation chapter 3, verse 15 and 16. Not slothful in business and fervent in the spirit of the Most High's work. Let's see what it's talking about. Revelation chapter 3, verse 15. I know thy works, that thou art neither cold nor hot. That you are cold or hot. That's another word for fervent, hot. Come on. I would thou work cold or hot. Uh, brother, you either going to be 100% for this truth or you be a fake brother and get the hell out of here. Go ahead. So then because thou art lukewarm and neither cold nor hot. Read it again. So then because thou art lukewarm. Because you're in the middle. That's, the, that's that double-minded, Don't ain't sure, he don't know what to do. That love to hear the scriptures and don't know what to do with them afterwards. Go ahead. And neither cold nor hot, I will spew thee out of my mouth. You see that? The most high gonna put a lot of people to death that's coming in here playing games. Cause this is like the elders saying, this is not the Baptist church where you sit and, and run over some scriptures and feel all good and, and, and soft and mushy in your, in your heart. This is about business. The Lord's heritage is about business. Go ahead. So we got to be about the Father's business. Watch this. Proverbs 12, 24. Come on. Proverbs 12 and verse 24. The hand of the diligent shall bear rule. You see that? The hand of the diligent shall bear rule. Meaning what? We have to be diligent in God's work and we shall rule this earth. If you brothers, particularly you officers, are not diligent, you ain't ruling nothing. You're not ruling anything. Proverbs 22 and 13. Proverbs 22, verse 13. The slothful man saith, there is a lion without. I shall be slain in the street. Read it again. The slothful man saith, there is a lion without. I shall be slain in the street. What is that verse saying? Sakai, what is that verse saying? He's just giving an excuse. He's right. saying there's a lion in the street. I might get killed, so I ain't right. going out there. He's giving a BS excuse why not to do God's business. Just like when you got to send him, brother, go for a job. <laughs> Bruh, there's a lion out there. If I go out there to get a job, I might get eaten. So likewise in God's truth, there's things that need to be done. And all of a sudden, there's a lion in the street. You know there's a lion in the school, right? Who can go to the school and teach? There's a brother, there's a lion in there. If I go in there, I'm going to get eaten. That's a slothful, lazy man. That's what God says. Read it again. The slothful man saith, there is a lion without. I shall be slain in the streets. Go to Ecclesiastes 10.18. We're almost done. Ecclesiastes 10.18. I know you wanted to hear the white man is the devil. He is the devil, but guess what? There are more expedient things we need to salvation that the Lord requires of each of us. Ecclesiastes 10 verse 18. By much slothfulness. By much laziness. The building decayeth. Now, Asaph was just talking about this building right here, what we in. This little hole in the wall, wall I, call, I, I call it, a dungeon. Each one of you, you should not be satisfied with just this. In our minds, we got to think bigger, we got to think greater. The problem with blacks and Latinos, we always think small. Some of you are content with this. I'm not content. I'm not going to be content until when, Josiah? When the kingdom is come, when we're ruling. So guess what? This ain't it for me. I want to move up out of here and get something bigger and better than this. And I want to keep moving from there. After we get a building, we're going to get two buildings. And after we get two buildings, we're going to get three until the missiles come and destroy everything. We're going to have a place for the people to take care of them. That's the mindset all you officers should have. Whatever city you're at, if it's Atlanta, you're going to have the same mindset. Chicago, same mindset. Tennessee, uh, Texas. Same Canada, same mindset. We got to keep it moving and grow and do bigger and greater things. Read it again. By much slothfulness, the building decayeth. Meaning this work will decay. If we put this truth in the sum of your hands, this will decay. It will become nothing. What do we hear? Oh, let's not do it this month. Let's do it next month. 
But when you go to the white man's job, how many of you, when the white man says, I need A, B, or C, how many of you tell him, let's do this next month? Raise your hand. I want to see this thing. Oh, no, ASAP, nobody. Everybody go, yes, I'm not. I'm a, I, not only am I going to do what you asked me to do, I'm going to go far and above what you said. But when it comes to God's work, let's do it next month. Let's put it off till next year even. You want to you wanna know the truth? You want to know, because what he just said is the truth. Because you are, look at Esau's businesses, his institutions, his industries. Who's running them? So-called Negroes. Who's doing the operations in his, in his system? Negroes, black, so the Israelites. The white folks are just sitting back in the top, just looking over down through the window, making sure that the Negroes is, is doing his work. And they're busy giving them their, their 100%. That's the reason why his businesses are rolling. We're doing that. Check it out. You don't have to take my word for it. Check it out. Go and look and see who's, the, who's, who's doing the operational functions in all of his, uh, sis, uh, in all of his situations. And his so-called Negroes, they ain't missing a minute off that man's clock. But when it comes to the most highest business, all of a sudden we got a whole bunch of BS excuses. That's the reason why I had that scripture read, the lukewarm scripture. The, the, the ones of our, our people, that, especially in leadership, that don't get our minds right when it comes to dealing with this, with the most high going to kill us. Read that again. By much slothfulness, the building decayeth, and through idleness of the hands, the house droppeth through. And through idleness of the hands, the house droppeth through. Is this one? So we need to learn these scriptures and get in our minds, what can I change about me to fix Israel's problem? Because we are sick people. We are a naked people. We are a homeless people. We are a hungry people. What can we do to fix the various problems amongst us? That's why we sit down month after month having meetings. We want class. I would love to have classes up in here seven days a week. When we came in the truth, that's how it was, seven days a week. But now we got a new breed. You know, I'm doing this and I'm just so occupied. I'm going to tell you what's going to make the difference of our success or failure. And I'm talking about just this camp right here. Because the Most High is going to raise up the camps, and there's going to be camps that's going to do what is written. Whether it's this one or not, Lord knoweth. Watch this. Give me Philippians 127. We're almost done. And I want you women to listen real good. Because what I'm about to say is going to address directly to you. Uh, Philippians 1 and verse 27. Only let your conversation be as it becomes the gospel of Christ that whether I come and see you or else be absent, I may hear of your affairs, that ye stand fast in one spirit, with one mind, stri striving together for the faith of the gospel. Read that bottom precept again, that you what? That ye stand, in, stand fast in I one want the one mind. That with part. one mind, striving together for the faith of the gospel. Read that bottom precept again. With one mind, striving together for the faith of the gospel. That's the only way blacks and Latinos can succeed. Having, we must have one mind. I always mention this example of Louis Farrakhan's Million Man March. You had a million black men. You would have thought they could have took everything over, but what was the problem? They were not all of one mind. You had some black men who were Pentecostals, some black men who were Buddhists, some black men who were damn Moorish Zionists. Some black men were, uh, give me some of the food, Jehovah Witness. You had all these different religions there. There was no unity. Read that again, that bottom precept. With one mind, striving together for the faith of the gospel. Now go to 1 Corinthians 2 and 4. These are principles that we must learn, that we must teach to our people, because they don't know. 1 Corinthians 2 and verse 4. And my speech and my preaching was not with enticing words of man's wisdom. I want you to listen good to what Paul says here. My words, I'm going to read it again. And my speech and my preaching. My speech and my preaching, go ahead. Was not with enticing words of man's wisdom. Watch this. But in demonstration of the spirit and of, the, of power. But in demonstration. But in demonstration of the spirit and power, meaning his works. His works. That's what James was talking about. That's what Christ was talking about in Matthew 25. It's not just reading scriptures. 
It's about your works. What are you doing in defense of the gospel? What are we doing in defense of the gospel? Go ahead. That your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. Howbeit, we speak wisdom among them that are perfect. I want that one verse, Isaac. Two and that's verse four. Um, that was verse five. Now, First Corinthians four twenty. I didn't forget you, women. I'm about to hit you in the head with this in a second. First Corinthians four and twenty. I'll get mad if you want. First Corinthians four and verse twenty. For the kingdom of God is not in word, but in power. What? For the kingdom of God is not in word. But in power. Read the scripture, read the scripture, scriptures, read the scriptures. Word and deed, power, demonstration. Show it to us. You believe this Bible? Show me what you got. I got a scripture. I'll read the scripture and what you're going to do about it. Nothing. Oh, you just like all them other people. Are you full of SH? Was that it, Isaac? Yes, sir. First Thessalonians 1 and 5. 1 Thessalonians 1 and verse 5. For our gospel came not unto you in word only, but also in power. See that? Not in words only. Not in words only, but in power, meaning demonstration. Go ahead. And in the Holy Ghost. According to the law. That's what the Holy Ghost refers to, the law. Go ahead. And in much assurance, as ye know what manner of men we were among you for your sake. Now, watch this. Go right back to Philippians 1. I mean, 1 Corinthians 1 and 10. Is it 1 Corinthians 1 and 10? Now, we went over a lot this evening. We went over a lot. Let me just look at it for a second. Yes, that's it. Watch this. 1 Corinthians 1 and verse 10. Y'all about to get mad, but I don't care. Go ahead. Now, I beseech you, brethren, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that ye all speak the same thing, and that there be no divisions among you. That there be no divisions among you. Go ahead. But that ye be perfectly joined together in the same mind and in the same judgment. Now I'm going to give you an example. There's a lot of things we want to do in this truth. I'm going to give you an example. The sisters cook every time we come together, particularly on the Sabbath, right? Yes, sir. Okay. And I thought, my, my, actually my wife said to me, you know what, Israel could have their own restaurants. How many of y'all heard that before? And then I thought to myself, would the restaurant succeed or fail? The restaurant would fail. I'm gonna tell you why the restaurant would fail. Oh yeah, who knows why the restaurant would fail? And I don't wanna hear nothing about the white man either. We wouldn't support it. Ah, there you go right there. Right. I'm going to give you an example of why we wouldn't support it. How many of you in here see the kid, the women, send their kids out for pizza or other foods out there when the women here cook? How many of y'all see that? I see it. My kids used to be involved in it. I tear them up. But they don't like I don't care if they don't like it. I'm going to tell you about why the Chinese succeed, why all other nations succeed, because they're unified. If they got a restaurant, they're going to eat that food. And when the money come in, they're going to use that for their people. But not blacks and Latinos. You cannot come together on nothing. So we will always fail. Because there'll be some woman that go, the kids, they don't like this. So let's get pizza. So we will always fail. Not just that. Guess what? There's brothers in here who do hair. Uh, who, uh, what's the brother? Ezekiel. Brothers who cut hair and all that. Sisters over here cut hair. It will fail. Because there's going to be some of us. I don't want to get my hair cut there. I don't want to go somewhere else. Super cuts. I'm going to go down the block. The white man. We will always fail as a people. So read what the apostle taught us again, Isaac. 1 Corinthians 1 and 10. Now I beseech you, brethren, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that ye all speak the same thing, and that there be no divisions among you, but that ye be perfectly joined together in the same mind and in the same judgment. Y'all see that? These are keys to success if we ap apply these basic principles. The other nations do it naturally. Exactly. That's what naturally, I want to think about. We got to be forced to apply these basic things. And it's hard for us. Can I say something, Elder? 
you were saying something earlier about when we were talking about how, how our people, we would leave here and go support the other nations in their stuff, Ch chicken wings and, and fried rice and all that stuff. That's the other nations cooking that. And then the point was made that they themselves won't do that. You want to know why? Because, and they, and they will eat their own stuff, even if they don't particularly like what they're doing. Maybe they might not want to eat chicken wings or whatever they cook, but they are not going to support you. You want to know why? Because they understand the vision. That's what our people don't understand. They understand the vision. They understand the mission of why they're doing what they're doing. They understand the reason why they're going to just stay within themselves. They're going to support their own business, even if they're uncomfortable with it. There's a goal behind what they do. The goal is to always have their businesses built up and because we're not thinking like that. Right. We don't think business minded. We don't, th we, don't, we don't see ourselves as running corporations. That's the reason why a while back I made that, uh, I, I gave that analogy of if a group of us was sitting, if a group of us was standing outside in an open field and we saw a group of, of, of black men just walking around with those architect tubes or something, and, and we looking at them, we won't think to ourselves that these are the brothers that's getting ready to build something. We'll say they're working for white folks. Or errand boys. Or errand boys or something. But if we see a group of white men walking with those architectural tubes and drawings in there, what will go through your mind? They're getting ready to build something. Mm -hmm. They're getting ready to do something. I've seen it. That's the reason why I'm talking that way. I've seen how our people react to when white folks walk up on an empty area, a torn down, run down, this and that and the other. He got his, his, he got his hat on, he got his, his drawings in his hands, and everybody that's looking at him got confidence that in about a few years, there's gonna be a skyscraper there. Mm -hmm. But when it comes to us, if we walk, a group of us walk there with the same hat on, the same tubes, they're saying that we're working for somebody. Why is it that we have that perception? Because Negroes ain't about doing nothing. That's the reason why, and, that, and that's known. So here, the Most High gives us the script on how to get ourselves together. We look at it, we read the scripture, going back to what you said, we read, we love the scriptures, but nobody want to do nothing. We don't want to make it happen. Do you hear what he said? That's why I said it's not, yes, the white man is the devil, but it's more than that. This That's truth right. is more than that. It's about building a decayed, this is a decayed nation. We must, we have the tools. This is the program here. Sorry, y'all, sorry. The Bible is our guide map to build up anything, questions we got, the answer is here. How to succeed in this world is right here until the missiles come. We know that, because you got some camps, why you got to go to school? Why you got to even bother doing it? The missiles are going to come. What if the missiles don't come for another 20 years? Now what? 20 years of your life, you wasted screaming at the white man. On the screen, but meanwhile, you're homeless. You ain't got no wife. Your kids hate you because you can never do nothing for them. You want, you want to know why the reason why our people think this way? Because it takes real men to make things happen. And, a lot of, and our men, quote unquote men, are still boys in their minds. That's right. That's what the problem is. We have been taught how to be boys and we have not grown out of that sick state of mind. I'm telling you straight. We have not grown up to be men yet. Yep. We're still, that's why when you touched on Mamby Pambies, I, I wanted to go deeper into that word. Because Mamby Pamby, in my mind, is telling me mama's pampered boys. That's how I see it. That's what Mamby Pamby mean to me. Want to be pampered by their mothers. Yep. Big, big grown men, still with a, a, a mentality of a boy. Time to come out of that foolishness. We got the greatest knowledge on the planet Earth. Here you got the doggone heathens using our scriptures to build their businesses up and here we are the we are the stars of the movie script the bible and we ain't doing nothing right that's a shame exactly we are the subject of the greatest book on the planet earth and we're sitting down here on our behinds ain't doing the doggone thing exactly get that in acts four we're almost done i know i keep saying that but we are i ain't gonna keep out too much longer acts four watch this acts two verse 41 then they that gladly received his word were baptized. And the same day there were added unto them about 3,000 souls. Can y'all imagine when that comes to pass here? Imagine 3,000 souls repent. What we going to do for them? We can't even get somebody to come and teach a class. That's why blacks and Latinos, you are the greatest hindrance to your own progress your own success 
that Negro, that nigger mindset, because that's what it is. Romans 16, 1 and 2. Romans 16, verse 1 and 2. I commend unto you, Phoebe, Phoebe, our sister, which is a servant of the church which is at Centria, that ye receive her in the Lord as becometh saints, and that ye assist her in whatsoever business she hath need of you. So do y'all see this? Again, is the word business. There were things going on to help the people that the sisters helped and the brothers helped. Business to help, in this, to help this truth grow. That's what we got to do. We need you brothers to get serious in this truth. It's a great work. You brothers and sisters that are talented and various, you have, all have various gifts. You got to put your brick in this nation of Israel. And it's all to the glory of the Lord. Because when the multi, as the multitudes come in, they come in right now sparingly, one by one, two by three, like that. Okay? There's going to be things that the body needs. And we, we must be there to provide it for them. Who is confused over today's lesson? Raise your hand. Because if anyone's confused, I'm going to go through it again. Who understands? Raise your hand and say aye. Aye.